Today we're going to build a FreeNAS network attached storage. This particular setup is going to be a mini ITX, media streaming, and file storage for a home setup. All of the components we will be using will be listed in the description and this video will be split up into segments to be able to easily follow along and pick up where you may have left off. The components that were selected for this particular build were used for a reliable small footprint and power efficient setup that will use a ZFS RAID Z1 storage which will allow for one drive failure before any data will be lost. There are virtually limitless amount of setups that you could use for a free NAS storage ranging from spare parts you have around your house to large commercial grade servers. We are going to be on the server grade consumer end of things. As you can see, the first thing we need to do is make sure the case is completely torn apart so you can get to the inside and install the motherboard standoffs. Next we are going to install the I.O. backplate for the motherboard. The purpose of the backplate is primarily cosmetic but it also keeps out dust and debris. This particular build is my own personal NAS that I use for file storage as well as media sharing throughout the house. The easiest way to install the I.O. backplate is to press on one of the corners and then press each side as they snap into place. Once you've got it installed, go around and press each side make sure it's securely fastened and snapped in, otherwise the motherboard will not fit very well. Next we are going to install the motherboard. Make sure you get some of the cables out of the way. The motherboard will fit into the I.O. backplate that you just installed. That's where all the USB ports, the HDMI or VGA adapters, LAN adapters will fit through there. There will be some tabs across the top part of the plate. So if you're having trouble getting it situated into place, those tabs need to be over the top of the input and output components on the motherboard. If you're having troubles getting the holes to line up with the standoffs, those could be in your way. Once you have your motherboard in place, it's time to install the mounting screws. When you're tightening these screws down, do not tighten them securely until you have all of them in, and then you can go ahead and tighten them down all the way. Be sure that when you get to the point to where you're ready to tighten these down all the way, that you tighten them snugly, but not hard enough that you're going to crack or damage the board in any way. And that's all there is to installing the motherboard. Check out the next video for installing the CPU and the heatsink.